So, Rachel, it is super nice of you to take the time and talk to me about the Universal Code of Conduct. And my first question to you would be how you became aware that this work to create a Universal Code of Conduct is going on. Yeah, sure. Um, I first became aware, I can't actually remember the moment that I first became aware, but I think it might have been at a Wikimedia Foundation monthly staff meeting where it was just mentioned um, and some emails that went out um, so, to mailing lists. So I just checked out the links and, and read more about it um, then. But yeah, I can't remember the exact moment that I became aware of it. It probably will be very important for you as someone who is working for uh, organizing with organizing events. Um, so my question to you, the next question would be, what impact do you think will a universal code of conduct have on the attendees of Wikimedia events? Yeah, um, so right now at our events, we use a combination of um, different friendly space policies. We have a foundation friendly space policy. We have a friend, a community friendly space policy on Meta. And then a lot of affiliates and user groups have their own individual adapted friendly space policies, sometimes called by that names and sometimes called by other names. And also in our technical spaces, we have a technical code of conduct that is um, uh, used in all technical spaces, whether physical or not. So as you can tell, there's not necessarily consistency at events between um, what policies are used and what policies are not used. Um, so I think having a universal code of conduct will bring um, consistency um, to all events so to make sure that nothing is um, missed um, because it's definitely fine when communities adapt their own friendly space policies but if you had an incident at an event um, and it didn't happen to be covered by that specific policy now it will be because hopefully the universal code of conduct will cover um, everything everything that we're doing um, and kind of break it down into really really specifics um, so I think that's the main um, on the attendees of, ev of events I think that's the main um, benefit that it will have. They just know across the board what's what's covered everywhere. Do you think it will also um, have an impact or change anything for the attendees of those events um, if they are contributing online, either during the events or in the follow-up of the events? Um, I think a lot of work gets done around events online. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that's a huge value that having a universal code of conduct will bring because there really is no barrier or line between when does the event start, when does the event end, because we're an online community mostly working online and, you know, the work on events starts on wiki pages. Um, all across the universe and, you know, even in telegram groups and, you know, it's it's before the event starts and goes way after it ends. And so having this universal code of conduct um, will make the lines much less blurry in terms of um, if an action was covered or not by the events policy because it didn't actually happen during the event dates. Um, so I, I think that's a huge value that it will bring. Thank you. Yeah, I hear you that um, you're also thinking of possibly this policy applying in non-Wikimedia spaces. Is this something you would like to see because you were talking about the Telegram groups? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, we so we do use Telegram groups at um, community events. Not all events do, but it has become con consistent. It started with Wikimedia Summit, went with the hackathon in Vienna. So and then from there, you know, many, many events use Telegram. So what we do now is um, pin the policies to the Telegram group. So we say, you know, in all of the main Telegram groups, like the XYZ friendly space policy is, is you know, applying here in this channel. If you're not abiding by the policy, um, you will be removed from the channel. And, and so I think the same thing would happen with, um, with the universal code of conduct that we end up with. Um, and yeah, it's funny because in, in our mind, and maybe we do think of the Telegram groups as Wikimedia spaces, but yeah, they're not maintained or owned by the foundation, but they are created by us, labeled with the Wikimedia label, you know, like Wikimedia Hackathon 2018 or something. And um, yeah, so we, we definitely would need um, the universal code of conduct 
hopefully to apply to our um, all of our activities that we're doing around events as well. Thank you. That was a bit going off the topic of how should the universal code of conduct be created already on how should it be enforced and where should it be enforced. <laughs> so let's get back and um, I ask my main important questions, but I still would like to know if there's anything else you want to share about the concept of a universal code of conduct from your very special um, perspective as a staff member who is helping community organize events and organizing events herself. Yeah, sure. I, I just really want to thank the committee for working on this. I know this is a big project and really hard work. And if it helps, um, once we had the um, technical code of conduct in place, it really, really helped our technical communities, especially around events. Um, it was just really clear which policies would be there. Um, and so I think the same thing, once we have a universal code of conduct that we have, you know, community buy-in for and every, you know, it's finalized and we're moving forward, I think it's going to be a huge change and really helpful to event organizers and community members across the board on all projects. So um, I, I think we've already shown through the evidence of the technical code of conduct that this is needed and was very useful after it was implemented. So I, I just want to say keep up the good work. And if you have any questions whatsoever about in-person events, technical or non-technical events, um, I'm really happy to be a resource for you and help you um, answer questions about what, what was done and what has happened in the past um, around code of conduct and friendly space policy issues. Thank you very much also for encouraging the drafting committee to come to you with further questions. And yeah, thank you for your insights. You're welcome. Thank you.